Hello kids, this is going to be a short video. I just wanted to perhaps once again comment to you that unlike when I was growing up, you kids are being birthed into a world that has been fast consumed with darkness, with quite honestly an evil that I with my abundant imagination could honestly never have imagined. I'm being as honest as I can to you. It is called leftism, the Democrats, cultural Marxism. If you can cultivate and hone your intuition to discern what is truthful and what is lies, and it is hard to do, as you can experience by looking at the New York Times newspaper, and most everyone in New York City, probably your parents included. That's why this is so difficult. And maybe I'm lying to you right now. See, that's why it's so hard. You don't have an anchor. The only anchor you have is your instinct and your ability to think logically. I recommend you study Descartes. Um, study chess. Study chess. For yourself. Study mathematics and investigate history through source texts because most history books will lie to you. You are being birthed into a world of darkness, man. This rampant, heinous anti-white racism, it is a product of this darkness. As I have said, when I grew up in the 80s, there was no racism issue, kind of at all. And I am 46 years old. I have traveled all around America across my life. I've lived in many places. And thus, I have an authority to tell you that there exists no institutional, systematic racism. It doesn't exist. And many black people can tell you this. Jesse Lee Peterson is someone who most comes to mind. Candace Owens, Larry Elder, Thomas Sowell, Michael Massey. These are all black people. Alan West. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It hasn't since 1965. And that was only because of a product of something of Jim Crow laws, which, here, perfect example, I stumbled upon it. Jim Crow laws, we all, for actually good reason, but not the reason you think, we all hear Jim Crow laws and a negative image comes in our mind, but not for the reason that you would think. Because think about this, Jim Crow laws, what does it mean? Separate but equal. Oh, separate but equal. Hold on. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. This is it. Is separate but equal a negative concept? It isn't. How can you argue to me that separate but equal is a negative concept? It is not a negative concept. See that? But I bet you've never in your life, and even the adults too, never in their life, because they're fucking dumb have even thought about what I just said, and isn't that simple? Now, as an aside, the problem with Jim Crow laws in reality, because of human realistic results, things were not equal. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I, because I made a point. Here's another example, actually, about thinking for yourself. This is a good one. When I was 12 or 13 years old, my friend said, Jimi Hendrix is the best guitarist. Man, he could play with his teeth. And I bought that because I didn't know how to think for myself. And I was like, wow, I guess so. Jeez, you can play guitar with your teeth. You're a badass. And I kind of went around telling people that. And then I told that to one of my friends who play guitar. And I said, boy, isn't Jimi Hendrix the best? And they were like, yeah, he's good. And then I said, yeah, he could play with his teeth. You know what my friend did? He went like this with the guitar. And then it blew my mind. I was like, wow, I'm a real idiot. I had this idea that Jimi Hendrix was great because he could play with his teeth. And... I never thought about what that means. There was nothing to that statement. It was a joke. People don't think for themselves. You've got to learn to do that if you're going to survive college, to say the least, let alone this world. And to an extent, the Browning education. The lies they teach you at Browning.
I am going to show you a few quotes by the famous and right now extremely relevant George Orwell. Please, I suggest you read the novel 1984 and the novel Animal Farm. Read those and compare that to what is happening right now because these Orwellian issues that when I was young I thought, well, that is actually is interesting, but eh, I don't have to worry about it. It's like just fantasy, whatever. I never realized the George Orwell culture, we're in it right now. We've descended into it. We're underwater into it. It is the communist, democrat, leftist culture that you are being attacked with, inundated with, swamped with by probably every single adult you come across, including your parents. And all you have is me, this solitary relic from a world gone past, telling you the opposite of what everyone's telling you. What must be my motive? You know, think about that. What's my motive? It's love, man. I just love you guys so much and I love truth. And I have perhaps a kind of gift or a talent or whatever to see things clearly. And what I see is an ugly horror that terrifies me. For you kids, not me personally, but for my race and my culture. And to a lesser extent, but all the people in the planet, indeed too. Kids, the right, Donald Trump and the Republicans, we are fighting against a darkness that quite honestly will probably lose because right-wing people are scared as well and they don't have the courage that I do and I'm just one person. And it takes courage to battle these psychotics, these leftist minions of evil. Minions of evil, zombies. The zombie apocalypse is upon us. I swear to you it is. I can see it. I have lived long enough to see it. And I think we will lose. I think that you kids, when you hit 30 and on, you're going to probably be consumed unless the Donald Trump type movement continues, unless it continues. If it doesn't continue and the America and the world becomes like New York City, I just fear and feel for you guys. If you want to live freely, you're going to have to go become mountain men and live in the woods. Because if you want to live in modern society, you're going to be living pure evil lies. There's going to be nothing truthful in anything anyone says. There's going to be no meritocracy. Natural instinct, human nature is going to be crushed into nothing. You're going to live a complete lie of racist, oppressive, evil communism. The only reason it's not exactly like the USSR is because we have so much abundance here in America in the first world. But give it about 60 years and all this wealth will run out and then we'll be back to the USSR. But the terrifying problem is this, and this should keep you up at night if you understand what I'm saying. When the USSR and communism was taking over the world, there still was the West Europe and the United States to battle the communists. And thank God we won in a certain way. But my point is, I believe that in the long run, communism will win. And there is going to be no one, no place on the earth to save you guys. The whole world is going to be like New York City. And if you dare say, I like fraternizing with people of my own race more than other races because it's just natural and I love other races and I love my relationships with other people, but I just kind of like seeing people my own race. You will lose your job anywhere on earth if you say that. You're going to have to whisper that to people and it's going to be a big illegal thing to say. And if those people don't like you in a couple of years, they'll rat you out to a court and you'll have to lie and say you didn't say that. If you say, I don't like our society the way it is. I wish we lived in a society with liberty and Western values way back in the day. That was in 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s America. You will become a prior. You will put in jail. You are going to be watched TV where there is going to be by law a black man, a yellow man, an Asian man, a Hispanic person, a transvestite. And they're all ganging up on the white man as by law. 
And you're going to be just watching these shows all the time. It's always the same plot, always the same plot. And if you say to someone, I don't like this film, you are going to somehow be socially and politically and maybe financially penalized. And you have to say you like this stuff. You can't say, as a man, I like video games where the man is the protagonist and he's like Rambo or something. You have to lie and say you don't mind if a woman transsexual is the video game protagonist. If you say that you don't like that, you're going to be ostracized, even though it's such a natural thing to say. And even if it wasn't a popular thing to say, where is the tolerance? We're going to be running elections on racial quotas. The concepts of let's achieve a better union through philosophical understanding of virtues such as justice, liberty, intellect, and intellectual exploration and truth. It's all gone. 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 Elections will now be racist headcounts. I expect a show like Cheers will be soon banned as racist. The Dukes of Hazard is banned now as racist because there was a Confederate flag on top of the car. I would suggest you look at any single episode of the Dukes of Hazard and see if you can find one single, one single incident in any way of racism. Good luck, guys because you are going to need it.